everybody, back to another Talking Wolves podcast. We hope you guys are doing well and you're keeping safe. My name is Dave and today I am alongside Matt Cooper. Matt, how's it going, man? Superb, mate. How are you? Yeah, all good, thank you. All good indeed. Today, guys, we're going to be giving our, well, it's our final uh, podcast of the 2020, or no, 2019, sorry, 2020 season. Um, really looking forward to it. Just an end of season review, really, giving our thoughts on the season so far. We are going to be recapping the last couple of games as well since we uh, last had a podcast, which was just after the Chelsea game. And we've got loads of questions and loads of interaction from you guys as well, which we're going to uh, dive into shortly too. Uh, but, of course, uh, a final big shout out to Pitch Football uh, for sponsoring the podcast, especially since sort of the second part of the season to uh, well, make sure you go and check them out. Fantastic football app to check out. A little bit different to your normal football apps. You can put your predicted lineups. You can interact with other fans on there as well. Give your thoughts on the goings on with just Wolves and every other team around the world, really. So definitely worth checking out. And as I say, a big thanks to them for helping and supporting Talking Wolves and the podcast. And uh, hopefully we'll work with them in the near future again. Um, and of course, before we kick off, Matt, I'm sure we're going to wish everyone... Uh, a big thank you as well for, for supporting the channel, uh, whether that be on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and on the YouTube channel and with the podcasts, all your support, whether you've clicked a video, you've clicked like on a video, listen to a podcast, it does mean a lot and hopefully, obviously we'll continue to that uh, in 2021. Matt, I don't know if you've got anything to add on to that as well. Um, I think you summed it up pretty nicely, mate, to be honest. You've um, been practising that all day, haven't you? On your day off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but just, uh, yeah, just, yeah, a huge thanks from me too. Um, really is appreciated. But also to those who have contributed, whether you've been on the video, whether you've written for us, etc. You know, um, it doesn't it doesn't go unnoticed. So, yeah, just a massive thank you. And uh, we hope to see you back again next season. Yeah, yeah, big shout out as well to, yeah, like you say, all the video contributors, all the uh, people that got involved with the website, which was launched quite recently as well. Uh, there'll be loads of content going up on that. Um, and if you are interested in helping out in any way, you can always email us at, well, info at talkingwalls.co.uk. So, yeah, big thanks to everyone. I wanted to start off the podcast on that sort of note anyway. Big sales um, push there, Dave. Let's get back yeah, into know, the football. Back into <laughs> after the holiday. You know it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Matt, since we last uh, met or spoke, we had just, I think, just had the Chelsea game. We were reviewing sort of the Premier League season as such. But we have had two games since then. I'm sure we would have wanted it to be a lot more, but Wolves have crashed out of the Europa League. We, we'll start off with that Olympiacos game. Wolves went into it uh, at Molyneux against Olympiacos. It was 1-1, all to play for, really. Wolves did have that away goal, but we knew just one goal really would have been enough for Wolves to do it. And we got that early penalty by Jimenez, and then we sort of sat back. But Matt, the performance itself, was it, uh, was it what you would have wanted as a fan or what you would have expected? The result, yes. The performance, no. But obviously the result is more important. I got I got quite a lot of stick, which may come as a surprise um, on Twitter. <laughs> um, after I tweeted about the performance and I, I tweeted throughout the game saying this is really poor. Um, you know, it's a it's a great result in the grand scheme of things. We're playing against Seville like this, and I'll tear us a new one. And uh, I I was surprised at the amount of abuse that I got because. It's like I'm allowed. I'm allowed to be disappointed at performance, even if we've won. Like it's just a, since the lockdown, the standard of performances, apart from the Everton game, which is like the standout, it's been really, really poor. It looked really jaded. It looked really tired. It looked really got like, no creativity or kind of idea going forward. Very disjointed, and the performance kind of was just that. I feel like. Um, if Olympiacos were a little bit more clinical, I really like the big fella up top. I can't remember his name. Um, but who scored loads of goals from this season? El Arabi. If, if they were a bit more clinical, they could have easily won that game. And if it wasn't for Rui Patricio, they they probably would have gone on to win that, win that because we we didn't really have any answers. You know, re- relying on him and his penalty, who again was superb from the spot. Um... But yeah, it was just it was just really lacklustre and, and, and poor, and we kind of like, kind of crawled over the finish line. But as long as you're winning games, it doesn't matter. It's when you're not winning games that those performances are like aren't just aren't good enough. Yeah, I think it, I think it is quite strange, you know, when Wolves, you know, you win games and it's still like as a fan, it's not quite what you would want or what you'd expect. And I think we have. We spoke about it. I'm not sure if we ever spoke about it on a podcast, but we've definitely spoke about it like privately. Where 
you know, it gets to a point where you don't realise how boring sometimes Wolves are until you start dropping points or losing the games. And then you sort of sit back and think, actually, we play like this quite a lot. Um, I think, again, like you say, the game against the Olympia Arcos possibly was one of those. I think the only other time that I've moaned after a win before, uh, I think we beat in, I've got a feeling it was Rotherham under Paul Lambert. We <laughs> beat in the 1-0 and it was absolutely atrocious and I think I've I got a feeling Rotherham went down that season and but they missed some great opportunities I think it was Danny Ward up front missed some great chances and after that game I thought I don't know like we are so lucky like we were dreadful that's, we were so that's lucky the thing though like it's not really an issue if you're winning games like Nuno's philosophy and, and, and the way we play it's got us to a fantastic position there's no arguing about that but to watch as like a spectacle it's it's fairly boring it's so defensive and regimented and like I said it does work it has worked but I don't know. Yeah. I think to go to that next level, something needs to change. But I don't. I don't mind that style of football when you're winning games, but when you're drawing games and losing games, it's just it's painful to watch. It, it, it really is. Like it's almost like they're in neutral with the handbrake on, and they just don't yeah. want to concede. It's like we don't go out there to win games. We go out there not to lose. Which I don't know. I, I just I feel like I just wonder with, with some of the players that we've got. Your Ruben Neves, your Joao Martinez, and Jota, and Jimenez, and Traore, and even even like Doc and Johnny, you got some players there. If you give them a little bit more freedom, like yeah, I'll just go and have a go. I really do think we'd really hurt teams, but it's just. Even Nuno said in his press conference after the Palace game, which really resonated with me, it was like, um, you know, first we have to be compact and we have to be defensive and organised, and then you have a chance. It's like, well, that's like, I get that, but. That just seems to be like the main thing since lockdown. It's just like just you know, just go for it a bit more. You know, we might have done something a bit more special. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I look at the Olympiacos game, and I know obviously they had a couple of opportunities that they possibly should have done a little bit better with. But I think Wolves also had those same sort of opportunities. We did sit back after the goal, and I think we tried to absorb the pressure. Um, which we did to be fair but like you say I think Patricio made a couple of great saves but there were a couple of opportunities where if Wolves had put those away I think you know we, we probably wouldn't be having this discussion um, mm. that's a bit of a stupid thing that I've just said because you know if you score goals you know you, you will be happier as a supporter but um, there were definitely chances for both teams which could have just swung the game either way but Wolves did enough. What do you what do you think of the the penalty shout itself? I mean, their goalkeeper was a little bit ropey when he at times. Uh, obviously, Jose Sarr was injured. Their main goalkeeper they put this sub goalie in, um, and he gave away the penalty really. But there was no no question really that was yeah. a penalty. Was it, it for was, you, mate? It was clever clever bit of play from Pedenza. I, I don't think I can see any other player for Wolves like going for that and just getting his body in between it. It was really intelligent play. I don't think any other player would have got to that because of the speed, because he covered some ground. And I don't think Adama's yeah. quite got the intelligence to kind of, you know, spot the opportunity like I can get in between it. And if he just touches me, I'm going down. It's a penalty. So I've been really impressed with Pedence. Um I don't think he's going to be a well beater for Wolves, but I think he's going to be a really good option, really good squad player. And he's taken his opportunity really well. So it was yeah, it was it was clever play. I mean, it's a bit stupid from the keeper. You knew you could see it coming a mile Dreadful off. Dreadful first touch, wasn't it? Yeah. Just get, get rid of it. <laughs> and then to just, he's obviously took a first touch. It's been really heavy, and he's like, oh god, look, I'm making my first appearance in a while. I need to do something here, and he's just had a bit of a rash moment. But yeah, and him him and his dispatch from the spot. I know we'll come on to the severe game, but he's he's just. <laughs> He he's just brilliant from the spot, isn't he? I know you know the severe game, probably the most important penalty he took for Wolves. He fluffed it, but I don't think you can really, maybe you can really crit- criticise him when he's only missed one for Wolves before, which was was it Ajax in a friendly? No, it wasn't Ajax. He was in that H Hotels Cup, oh, whatever was it? it was. Remember that the weird like half an hour games or whatever. Oh yeah, that it was, was, him. It was never just like a one sorry. day tournament, wasn't it? That was strange. Yeah, he was in a penalty shootout, and I was mm. there like, yeah. Um, you had that, and obviously the the offside goal as well. That was extremely unfortunate for Olympiacos, wasn't it? He was, but he's offside, so you can't really complain. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's like VAR, VAR, like Wolves have got away with one, but like even when we've had decisions go against us with VAR, it's it's frustrating, and I don't agree with VAR. It kills the game, but if you're offside, you're offside. You're either black or you white. You know, it's it's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, no complaints. Um, and then for me, the only other got well, a couple of golden opportunities in the second half. Uh, Jota, he come off the bench. It was a really poor pass from the Olympiacos defender. Jota's through, and I think he just 
It's just lacking that confidence, isn't he? Through on goal, you really Diogo Jota maybe pre lockdown would have buried that every every day of the week. I don't even think he pre lockdown he buries it. He's had, he's had a very <laughs> oh, poor, no. very, yeah, uh, very poor uh, season considering his standards, and he's still got what fourteen goals. <laughs> Yeah, but he, he, you know that little spell he went on. Uh, he scored that hat trick against Espanyol. He had a great game against Spurs as well. I felt mm. Norwich as well. All around that just sort of period, he he did really really well. Um, but since lockdown, I don't know what it was. He had that little afro after lockdown as well. Yeah, like, I don't know what's happening. Waning back as <laughs> But when I think Nuno loves him because like defensively he offers the team so much as well because he's like his positioning good. He he presses really well. Um. And again, it goes back to that defensive shape and being solid and organised. Like Nuno will look at his attacking contributions and say, "Like you can do better." But first and foremost, we need to be a unit. And Jota's got that got that down to a T. So you can see why he still kind of picks him. <coughs> yeah, I agree with that as well. Uh, well, that, that obviously saw walls through to the. Uh... To the quarterfinals of the uh, Europa League against Sevilla, a tough team. We knew it was going to be a tough death. Their unbeaten run was, well, has been unbelievable. And uh, it was, of course, going to be a tough game for Wolves. Um, in the end, Matt losing one goal to nil. But the biggest talking point is going to be that penalty. Early doors, R- Raul Jimenez getting the penalty. Um, and you're thinking, that we, well, I think everyone was thinking there's only going to be one answer here and unfortunately, somehow it was the wrong answer, wasn't I, it? I just knew he wasn't going to score. I, I, every time we get a penalty, I'm confident this is going in because it's Jimenez. But with this, I was like, it's just going to be Sod's Law, isn't it? It's the most important penalty of his Wolves career and it's, I just know what's going to happen. And it, it it really did set the tone for the rest of the game. It was a, it was a phenomenal run from Adama. You've seen that Spanish commentary and he's going vroom, yeah. vroom. and uh, although that was probably the only thing he did all game but it was um, it was it was a special run and they had no choice but to chop him down but that penalty miss was I think if we scored that we might go on and, and get some out of the game but it just set the tone and you can see the heads dropped him and his heads dropped but the whole team just looked just void of any kind of confidence fitness belief it, it, it they just looked dead on their feet yeah, and I, I think that was the first time I was very, very disappointed with how Wolves have played this season. I think, you know, normally I try to take, you know, whatever happens, some sort of positive twist on things. But I think I said in the review, I just looked at it and I thought, we, we went out there, like you said a bit earlier on, we did go out there to, to win the game. We went out there to stop them scoring, really. Obviously, it didn't work in the end, but it was a very, very disappointed performance with how we set up and how we played. I think I was extremely surprised that we'd set with the 5-3-2 and he'd picked Adama to go up front rather than Jota. I think with what you said earlier, with uh, Jota's Mm. sort of work rate and defensive work rate, Jota, you would probably say from the start, if that's how Nuno wanted to play, Jota would have been a more attractive option than Adama, surely. Adama and Raul just don't work up top together. They've worked for... For ten minutes against Man City away, that's it. It's yeah. just it just doesn't work. Adama's not got the the awareness to play that striker role. Just he can't do it. He's back to goal. He's just not good enough. Play him out right. He's a well beater. Play him down the middle. He's just he, he's he's like really cold. That cold. experiment's over, yeah. and it like you cut, that experiment. I don't know what I don't, I don't know why he did it. I'd rather him bring. I'd rather him start with Jota and then bring Adama on because you you can't get a tune out of Adama for more than sixty minutes. I don't, I don't know what it is, he just he just goes missing. I don't think it's fitness, but I suppose when you're that size and that build, you um, it, it's hard to give 90 minutes bombing up and down. But <laughs> Sevilla were a really good side, and I, I felt disappointed. I felt more disappointed with the Olympiacos game, which is weird because we won it, but Sevilla were a really, really good side. I, I still felt we could have won it there, though. I know we sat back and stuff and defended, but... There was just time, like obviously, like you say, if we scored that penalty, it would have been different. We could, it could have been like the Olympiacos game. We could have just sat back and just absorbed it and won one nil again, which I think probably would have been the case, seeing how Wolves set up for the rest of the game. But I'm still disappointed that we held so firm and they just scored off, in my opinion, a poor piece of defending, which we'll talk about in yeah. a second. But I'm still frustrated because I know if we got out a little bit more and tried to hold on to the ball a bit more, we only had 24% possession that game. Whenever we had the ball, it was like hot potato. We were going so direct towards yeah. Dharma and Jimenez. And, and we just didn't want to hold it. Look how if well we, Sevilla, and, yeah. 
I, I watched United play against Sevilla. I know the result was, you know, Sevilla got the better of United as well. But United should have scored two or three yeah. goals at least. And the way they were attacking, Sevilla's defence was all over the place. And I just think if we went for that just a little bit more, I'm not saying, you know, we should be playing on the halfway line upwards, you know, because they would have got us then. But if we tried to play football a little bit more and have one or two better attempts on goal... It, it, it could have been a completely different time we could well mm, we could still not could. even be talking about it you I mean, know. look how, how well Sevilla kept the ball I mean Benega is some player I've rated him for years and I, I, I can't I'm, believe he's going like, yeah, to it's the a shame least I think he could still play in Europe yeah. I'm, I'm just ashamed he's not come to the Prem because he'd, he'd, he'd walk into most sides apart from mm. probably Sitter but even then he'd probably walk in so he's just a, he's a phenomenal footballer but it's a uh, they kept the ball so well, but they're organised. But they have a go, and like that's what Wolves should aspire to be to. Because Sevilla are a great side. Wolves are a good side, having a great season. I really do believe that. I don't think we are technically as good as someone like a Sevilla. We, we're just not, and we haven't got the players to come off the bench and do damage. But Wolves got exactly what they deserved against Sevilla, and that was absolutely nothing because. Yeah, there's no way that you are going to hurt teams or or go on and win a game when for 85 minutes you camped out on your own six-yard box because that's what it was. It was relentless. We couldn't get it up. Was, Nothing it was, was sticking. Yeah. And Sevilla, although they didn't play great, they, they deserved to win it because they had a go and they you know, they tried to force openings, whereas Wolves, it was it was all we were 1-0 up. We were playing like we were 1-0 up. And again, I think it might be just down to them being a good side and Wolves not just not having the quality to do so, but... If anything, you know, for me, it just screamed that to go to this next level to compete in the top echelons of European football. To, I mean, I mean, Sevilla don't even compete in the Champions League; they're just Europa League specialists. But to be within within with a shout of qualifying for the Champions League, going a bit further in the Europa League, getting further at the table, we need three or four key additions in the starting eleven, not squad players. We need to bring in players in this first eleven to really because it's a bit stale and it? it needs freshening up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that shortly anyway, but lots of questions about that. And obviously the goal for Severe in the end, the goal, the sucker punch for Wolves, I think is completely avoidable as well. It's not like it was a bit of brilliance, really. I think, you know, short corner, which they were trying once or twice before, and you would given the most influential player on the pitch, Benega, all that time. I do feel a bit for Benagre because he's got either the short player to, to mark um, or Benega, and he's got no help there whatsoever. So he's sort of stuck in two minds, and Benega picks the ball... A campos, to be fair, it's a very, very good header with good a player. group of players behind him. But you know that, that if we have, if you have another player there closing down Benega, you block that cross, and you know, and if it could have happened, really, it's just... when it went in, I was I, like my dad and my brother were gutted, and I was just like, absolutely no complaints. It's exactly what we've deserved. If we'd have had a go and I'd like you know rattled the woodwork a couple of times and had a few more shots on target, and never had the pen, I'd have been absolutely gutted. But if it wasn't going to come in normal time, it was definitely coming in extra time. There was. It, I had a feel. I I was just waiting for. I, waiting we, for. It we to were be never ever yeah. ever going to win that game. Set up the way we did. Not in a month for Sundays. So for me, it's just it was just a matter of um, when, not not if. And I mean, Sevilla didn't even play that well, but they're so well organised and keep the ball so well, and they have got real real quality and. That moment of quality from from Benega and then Lucas Acampos, who again I think is a brilliant player. It just it was a difference, but yeah, no complaints. Disappointing, disappointing to go out, but it's still, it's still a good achievement, mind. Of course, I think we all would have snapped your arm off for a quarter final finish at the start of the season. It's just well, same with the league. I think I would. I, I said it in the video. I would have snapped your arm off for a quarter final, seventh place finish. But I think a lot of people are disappointed because of. We, we all know we could have done better or set up differently and had different results. And uh, I think that's the disappointing thing. But Nuno made it pretty clear, Matt, after the game that, you know, he wants players in. Mm-hmm. Um, and potentially, you know, things are going to get shaken up in the summer. Do you think that is a, well, that is a, it's a serious message to the board? Do you think it could come to a point that if Fosun and co don't back him, then we could see possibly towards the end of Nuno's Wolves reign? Yeah, I think so. I've said it. I think I said it in the last window, or it might have been after the Man United game when we got dicked in the cup, when we had like so many players out injured. I was like, you either back him or lose him. It's just, it's as simple as that because I don't I don't think Nuno is going to ever manage a Real Madrid or a Barcelona, but you could. I mean, he's perfect for like an Atletico Madrid, especially maybe Simeone coming oh, to the end God, of his yeah, tenure. Yeah. 
I mean, it's yeah. pretty much like for like in it in terms of how they their, their philosophies. Yeah. But it, you, you back him or lose him, it's as simple as that. You, you should see enough from Nuno now to you know to, to have faith in him. And it, he's usually pretty coy about transfers and anything behind the scenes. But that's twice now this season he's had a plea to the board saying we need signings. And I think it might have been a little nod to players who have been there since the start. Cause he said, like you know, that some of these players have been here since the championship. Perhaps that's a five in. Five out, four in, you know, that can't, well, it probably won't be that because it's a small squad, but I, it just, it really does need freshening up and this is where Fosun need to flex their financial muscles and, and show that they mean business because the last two windows have been pretty pathetic, if you ask me. Pedence at 15 million, okay, good squad player. Catrone, 16 million, gone back, made enough, made money on him. Vallejo was a disaster. Bruno Jordao sitting in the reserves and Neto has been, been a good signing, but You've had two windows there, and yeah, two, two out of the five players there. have been. Have had, I mean, Neto's had more of an impact than than Pedence, but even so, he's it's not been huge. It's been for recruitment's been terrible, and that needs to be that needs to be sorted out because we can't afford to have another window like we had the past two because we've got away with it and we won't get away with it again. Well, the thing is, for me, like in the last or the last well this year transfer windows. It's not so much been the players or the personnel. I think we all expected a lot better of Catrone and Vallejo and, and sometimes stuff like that can be taken out of Wolves' hands. I think, you know, before we signed them, I think everyone would have welcomed those two with, uh, you know, well, mm, we definitely. would have all loved them in the Wolves squad. But the thing that concerned me was the lack of players we signed in terms of numbers. I think it was pretty clear. I know everyone was like, well, Nuno likes a small squad. I think it's pretty clear that we needed certain areas, certain players in certain areas. Doc, he's had zero backup all season. Uh, okay, we saw Adama play there a little bit at the start of the campaign. Yeah, but he knows then it's we not also sustainable. Saw... He knows well, that exactly. He'll be there for two. But or three why games. aren't we? We we go up to the Premier League and we sign Dendonka on loan, albeit with an obligation to buy. We sign Jimenez on loan. We sign Johnny on loan. Why are we signing that caliber of player the year we go up, but the year that we actually need a bit more strength and depth? We don't sign anyone on loan. Completely agree. Like, we just haven't yeah, utilised that loan mark. It's strange, the, the, yeah, yeah. The, but the quality this of summer we have to come backwards, haven't they? Really? Yeah. You look at like Johnny yeah. Dendonka, Jimenez, Adama, Matinho in the first window. Like in hindsight, that's an unbelievable window. And you look at Bruno Jordao, Pedro Neto. Um, it's I mean I'm, Neto is going to be a good player in the future, but he's been pretty. He's been shit, and it it has been rubbish. The, yeah. the window. If you I'm, compare I'm, it, if you use it as a yardstick, the first season, yeah, it's not good enough. Yeah. Well, even the 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 championship window though, you got Neves, Jota, uh, Bolly. I I know they've all sort of grown up and grown into the team, but you know any mid table like mid to lower end table in the Premier League could have would have been ecstatic with that, wouldn't they? The first year, Alfred you know. and Joy, like it, what a shrewd bit of business that was, you know, just little gems like that. Although we, you know, we didn't sign him, but I think if we didn't mm. have Alfred that season, we might have struggled in some games. And you know, just signings like that, like you said, utilizing that loan market was just that's what we were known for. Now it's like oh, I, I don't know, but is that because Felwell's not in head of recruitment anymore? Or is it because like? She, Jeff she's kind of looking over operational side well this is going to be uh, this is the first summer the first big window now without Kevin Farewell at all um, so this will be extremely interesting to see and I think uh, you know there were big rumours I think in January that Nuno had final say on players and that he was rejecting a certain amount of players I don't know how true you know the, but Danny Olmo was <laughs> yeah there's a very big calibre of players that he was reportedly rejecting so it'll be very interesting now to see if he per se lowers his standards almost and we see a load of new players coming in I think there were Dan, there was Danny Elmo I think there was another centre back as well that Huang was just, uh, Huang Chan, wasn't it as well yeah, yeah um, so it'll be very very interesting you know all, all three of those players have moved on to big big European sides so it'll be interesting to see how uh, what happens with, with Wolves all three of those by the way still in European competition I believe Leverkusen uh, still in it as well Leipzig is still in it. Leverkusen are not. Yeah. Are they out of the Europa League now? Yeah, Shakhtar. Are oh yeah, they lost to Inter, didn't they? Um, yeah, yeah. But I'm sure we'll come know. on to the signings that we're linked with. But I just feel, I just feel really underwhelmed by some of the players we're linked with. It's yeah. not me being miserable or negative either. It, it just, just seems very samey. Like, in terms of like, 
moulds of players that we're going for. And not, I'm not, I don't just mean Portuguese. It's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I'm sure we'll come on to it. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, we may as well jump into it now. Um, I mean, what a lovely got, link that was. <laughs> I know. We, we we've got a load of questions, and then we've got a little side link which a load of you guys have got involved in as well. So big thanks to everyone that got uh, involved in that. But we'll do the questions first because we you know we could uh, um, we could talk about this all of this stuff for a while. We'll start off with a question from Kieran um, Munai on um, Twitter. Do you think Nuno's game plan? Hindered how our season ended. Too defensive, not enough offered going forward. 32% average possession over the last three games. How would you change it up? I mean, we spoke about it a little bit there, but that's you know, sort of personified almost. Yeah. And how, how much, you know? I, I, I agree. I think the system really holds us back. I think if Nuno is going to become a real, uh, you know, top, top Winner. world-class manager and win stuff, I think he needs to have... I think he needs to have a plan B because at the minute I feel like we've got plan A and plan A point two, um, which is yeah. a three five two and the three four three. <laughs> I, I just don't see the necessity to play five at the back against Norwich at home. I've been saying this for a while. At Valencia, he pushed what would be Cody up into holding midfield and pushed the midfield too further on. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why he's not doing that. He got the players to do it. It's just. Uh, I think. I think he's a little bit. A little bit stubborn in in his way, and I mean, I probably would be if that was my philosophy. And I was a football manager, and I'd taken a club from the Championship to European football. You think, well, I know best, and you know what, fair play to him. But I think I think something does need to change because and teams will figure out how to play against us. You just have to keep evolving that system and keep changing. I'm not even I'm not even sure it's system though. I think it is a lot of it is personnel because like obviously Kieran said it there. Thirty-two percent average possession over the last three games. Okay, that's Chelsea, Olympiacos, Sevilla, which you know arguably all three very, very good teams, which I understand. But like I said earlier, when United got in the face of Sevilla, Sevilla didn't really like it, and United should have put that yeah. game to bed earlier. Olympiacos, we saw how shaky they were. A couple of very dodgy back passes. You could have pressured into them into that. Chelsea, okay, fair enough. We just weren't. But again, two mistakes in that game cost us. I think we just need the personnel. Like we saw at Burnley, of course we didn't win that game, but Nuno just wanted it. It was clear that he was going for it. He went with very attacking wing backs and stuff. But if we if we had our game plan, there's some games, possibly not this season, but last season, even against the big teams, we just passed the ball around. We were, we love to hold the ball, play possession, be patient and wait for our chance. It wasn't defensive. It wasn't like we you know we were playing counter attacking and sitting back. We against those teams. We were playing football and we wanted to win games. We got it. He does have to. I don't know if we're tired mentally, physically, everything. I think he's just got to get in. We've got to try now and bring in the players, mm. like we've said when we've shouted, screamed for for the last six months. A big midfielder, another striker, more attacking wing back possibly. Just players now that Wolves are comfortable on the ball and can get in the faces of the opposition. Mm. I think if we can start to do that a lot more and put pressures on the defenses, we've seen it this year how dodgy some of the defenses have been. Some of the goalkeepers have been the best goalkeepers in the world. David De Gea, Edison, you saw. I even watched Kula Bali the other day. Uh, I know it could be completely different once players have had a break and come back, but they're just so shaky under any sort of pressure. Kula so, Bali is anyway. I'm not sure what this narrative is about him being a ball playing centre half. Yeah, I know. I know, but like, you know, you start putting pressure on and Wolves have got, you know, as soon as you start getting countered or the team win the ball back, you just have your flat five again. You start again. But I'm I think. Not- Particularly asked about having thirty four percent possession. What I am asked about is having thirty four percent possession and not even countering. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, the that's problem. True. Well, Jimenez is just so isolated, and you need. Uh, we'll talk a lot about Jimenez, I'm sure, shortly. But you need somebody to help him. Whether that's your two wingers have got to be closer to him or further up with him. There were times like I know people were sending. I, know, I spoke to you about the screenshots after the Chelsea game. The shots of like six Chelsea players around Jimenez and Wolves just haven't got any support around him whatsoever. Like we need to, the transition from defense to attack either needs to be quicker, or as a team we just need to play more attacking. Um, I genuinely think I, I think Nuno will surprise us next season. I think he will change something up. It won't be the system for sure. It won't be the system, but I think if we could get the right personnel in, it will be a very very interesting. Imagine campaign for how the many team. goals Raul Jimenez would got if he played for Man City. Uh, you know. I've, because <laughs> we don't create chances and he's got 27 
it's cra- it's crazy, and it's not like you know, it's, you know, we scored seventeen. Is it in the league as well? Uh, is it that much? You're probably um, you're probably looking close to forty goals, like an Aguero type return, because he, he doesn't squander many these days, and he doesn't get many chances at all. So imagine if like he's in a team where he's constantly getting chances created for him. Scary stuff. Scary stuff. Um. I'd say the way he's put, is there anyone from our squad that you fancy to have a big impact next season? Someone said Pedence, if that makes it easier. No, I don't. Not, <laughs> I know, that's not, probably probably more so Neto than Pedence. I can't, I can't see any player excelling what they've sort of already done. Almost, not excelling, maybe. but not having a massive impact. Like, you're not going to go and see Pedence get 10 league goals, are you? It's, um, that's the sort. Maybe of, I, don't I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I, I like him though. I think he's. I think he's like a good player, but I can't see many. I of could the... see him getting ten, but he'd have to play consistently. Yeah, and he won't. So, uh, not 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 really. No, I can see maybe a couple of players coming in and having a really big impact, but in terms of that current playing squad, just can't just can't really see it happening. Not. I mean, mm. if him and his stays and Dharma stays and. Okay, I'm gonna say Nevers because I think next season might be the season where you'd be like, "Wow, this guy is like world class." I think you know we've seen glimpses of, of it towards the latter end of this season. Arguably, he's been our standout player since lockdown. I think it might be a bit of the changing you know, of the guard, Matinho slowing down a bit. I think next season may be the season where Nevers really takes you to that next level. So yeah, I'm gonna say Nevers. <laughs> uh, Martin Nevers has been unbelievable. Yeah, I think he's so one of those players now that at times is underappreciated by Wolves fans. I think we almost take it for granted now mm. at the age of still, what, 23, the, the stuff that he's, you know, he's and capable three of. Three kids as well, mate. You don't piss about, oh, do you? Fucking hell. Younger than me. It's a bit, well, <laughs> both of us. Yeah. It's a bit weird, eh? <laughs> we sat at home fucking talking about Wolves on a podcast, you know? <laughs> yeah, but I am moving out soon though, mate. So yeah, I have got some priorities in line. <laughs> <laughs> um... Someone said, would it, well, I say someone, that's a bit rude. Uh, Liam Jones, Jonesy Boy 97 says, would it suit Wolves having a cam slash number 10 for a uh, cam, by the way, is a central attacking midfielder for people that don't Not play someone called Cameron. FIFA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> would it suit Wolves having a uh, Colin Cameron slash number 10 <laughs> sign for us to give us something different when we can't break teams down? You know, I think we all know that that's possibly an answer and a solution that Wolves should look at a bit more, Matt. Yeah, but I don't think they will because again, system. Uh, midfielders are pretty much like I looked. Yeah, at but the... that for me, that is the perfect way. Like I was saying, you got to get in the face of the opposition mm. more. That's a perfect way of doing it. I, I mean, that's so, the most sensible thing. You two holding midfielders have someone that floats a bit more higher up. That is the most sensible and like most glaring thing to do, isn't it? Just take one out of the midfield and push them, push them further forward. But I looked at Dendonker and Neves' heat maps because I'm sad for. <laughs> The Chelsea game. I remember sending them to you. I was just like, "Oh my word!" Like yeah. they were they were inside Wolves' half, like in between the center, between the D and the center circle. And it was like, "What? What? What are you creative midfielders doing there? Like what? Like it's ridiculous." So I think yeah. that'd be the most sensible and the most glaringly obvious thing to do. But again, I don't think you'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I I I think we'll sign a very creative type midfielder it'd I be like, interesting to I like see the it. two the three then the one like Kenny Jacket the Kenny Jacket what, who did he used to play the number 10 like Dave Edwards was it yeah get him yeah. back <laughs> get him back he's perfect he's perfect Dicko Phobie Sacco it's magic. Dave Edwards or Michael Jacobs or whatever and Kevin yeah. McDonald mate I, I genuinely think he could play for anyone in the world <laughs> I love Definitely. Kevin McDonald <laughs> god he was a proper like gambler though he, was, he loved a, a drink as well you know don't care, mate. Okay. As long as he did it on a Saturday, I couldn't be not asked what he's up to in the rest of his time. Was there? Was it the? I think it was the official. You remember the old Gold Club podcast? Tony Daly was on there, and he said Kevin McDonald was genu- like he's just the worst trainer. Yeah, I, but I think every club has one of them. Someone that can't be asked, but when when it comes to it, you know, he was an unbelievable passer of the ball. He was just got just everything, mate. It's absolutely everything. Yeah. The, the, the Scottish savvy, <laughs> curly hair. <laughs> um. Joe Hans underscore nineteen. Do you think Wolves should focus more on both cup competitions next season? Yeah, I was saying this to a fellow in work actually. Um, who's a Blues fan? He's like, surely your priority next season is to go and win a cup. I was like, I've, 
I, I think, I mean, first and foremost, the objective is European football. Whether that's in the form yep. of the Europa League or the Champions League. I can't see the Champions League happening because everyone else has strengthened mad already. Um, I, I I think, yeah, a League Cup or an FA Cup. I think that I think that'd be great and I'd happily miss out on European football if it meant winning an FA Cup. I know you'd get European football for that anyway as long as the stars align. But yeah, man, I, I want to see Wolves lift the trophy because at the minute we've had three very good seasons under Nuno but not really much to show for it in terms of silverware. So I think it would be good for Nuno to get that cup under his belt as well because he's actually got something to show from this project that has been... You know, it is ahead of schedule and has been in most parts a success. So yeah, FA even a League Cup man, I'd be happy with that. I I, I agree with the Carabao Cup. I think you see historically under Nuno, the last three years he's not really given a toss at all about the League Cup. No. But I think now we know we're capable of, of playing two games a week. I think I believe the first four rounds are in September. Like they're done um, by the first four rounds are done by September. I think we should go for it, especially if we're adding two or three key players. Yeah. We're not really getting rid of anyone in the first team squad. You know, you're halfway to winning winning the cup. <laughs> if yeah, you know, we, we out of the what four rounds we enter second or third round, so we're only going to have two or three games there anyway. Um, so you get a couple of good rounds there, like. A championship side or like how you know Villa you know Villa got to the final they were they had a, obviously they played Liverpool and they sort of threw that game but they had a pretty and again we threw our game I was going to say like they had two boys teams we had but yeah. you know they had a very favourable draw to the yeah. final and that's what you need really we need a couple of League 2 League 1 championship teams we play a full strength team and I think everyone would take a league up wouldn't they yeah you need Gaff a bit of luck to along the access way, into yeah. European football yeah, you need silver. a bit of luck at along the way but uh, yeah, look, look. He said Villa's run. We gave my boy in the cup. Then Liverpool decided to play them the fours, and then we almost done them though. Even with a, with a yeah, um, but they're shit anyway. Old, so. um, <laughs> but yeah, a, a uh, cup man, be great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Joe, I think we would uh, we should focus on all for the cup. Yeah. <laughs> um, last one on Twitter, Finley Crow says he would win in an egg and spoon race between Matt and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, I wasn't very good at school at the egg and spoon race. Um, I don't know what you were like, Dave. I don't. I, I reckon. I reckon maybe over ten or fifteen yards, I'd do you. But I think if it was anything longer, then I a think I think we might it might be a tough one. But we'll that, that that can be one of our videos maybe during the next season. Yeah, when when there's no football years. because the pandemic hit even harder. Yeah, we were going to do Wars Olympics. We were going to do a cookery thing, weren't we, for Christmas? Oh okay. no! Like, yeah, yeah. like, we like, like no, come down with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We've like, I, I then come down with me during lockdown, wasn't it? Yeah, it we were going to cook really for hit. each other and write it. I thought it'd be, it would have been a real laugh. Yeah, I guys, let us know if you think that's a good idea. We we're going to do talking walls cooks. Come down with me. So I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm quite accomplished in the kitchen, uh, not so much in the bedroom, but um, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I, I thought it'd be a really good idea. But then it was like we can't come around people's houses so of course Talking Wolves adhered to the government guidelines and um, I've not seen Dave in person for god what since like March Amazing. yeah March oh right? yeah yeah yeah, I, I I cooked a pizza and wedges today for what it's worth so I think I could give you a <laughs> one for, for your money so <laughs> Dear um, yeah uh, we move on quickly to the Instagram questions uh, Evan McDonald he says do you think Matt Doherty had a better season this season than his last season in 18-19 Probably one for you, Dave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, good question. Um, I'd probably say so. With the amount of games he's played, um, and he's still got a very decent goal contribution, scored a couple of great goals. I think both seasons were very, very good. To be honest, I agree. With the fact that yeah, the fact that he's you know been remained fairly consistent this year. Obviously, still had a couple of games, a couple of question marks over a couple of performances. But the fact that he stayed predominantly is our right wing back for 95% of the season and done so well I think you know but both seasons he's, I think he's surprised everyone with how how accomplished he's been over the last two years in the Premier League yeah. um, Nuno loves him as well ex yeah exactly uh, Evan has also said do you think Pudence can break into a first team starting member no regular I'd assume but just, no I just can't see it happening I don't think I think if you're playing someone on the right, he's going to have to be a Dharma. And I think if you want to start someone on the left, I think Neto's ahead of him and probably Jota. 
Yeah. So, I think he'll start games, but he's not going to be. You say if you're playing Man United at home, he's not going to be starting. Yeah. Um, Declan has said, "Who has been your most exciting player to watch this season?" Madama. For as yeah, for as as frustrating as he can be, um, I think your dog agrees with me, Dave, as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as, as as frustrating as he can be he's just electric and I've not seen a player who gets me that excited sounds weird Get, sounds, gets me that excited down the Molyneux um, for, for a long time Christ he's good but he ain't that good uh, yeah I, I have to agree he's got to be a Dharma as well uh, Charlie Madden positions you think Wolves need to invest in alright we'll leave that one because there's going to be loads of those um, Robbie as well early Premier League predictions so that is on Instagram Robbie Benton number one um, he is apparently Lanehead Olympians goalkeeper fair play Robbie fair and that's his bio on Instagram um, yeah that, if you had to throw a, an extremely early prediction out there on where you think Wolves will finish next season Matt go on 8th I was, I was going to say 8th as well yeah. I just think we've Chelsea strengthening really well. Man United will be a better team. Arsenal look well under Arteta. I think they'll be better. I think Everton under Ancelotti will probably still be shit. It's a run for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I just think there's. This is why this window is so important to strengthen because other teams around us are going to be improving. So, yeah, I think eighth. If you said to me eighth and an FA Cup win. I would snap your hand off today. Oh, I'll hold you to that because when you're moaning this time next year, but we've actually won the FA <laughs> Yeah, game. okay. I'll well, snap your hand off for that, but if we were three points off third with five games to go, then I probably wouldn't snap your hand off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a final question as well on uh, Instagram is off Adam Causa. He says, Who would you rather keep this summer, Neves or Jimenez? And who do you think who? it's likely? Jimenez. How are you? Who would you rather keep this summer? Ruben Neves or Raul Jimenez? And do you think it's likely we could keep them both? <sighs> well, I think there's two. All right, let's, let's do it in two questions. Who would you rather keep out of Neves or Jimenez? I think Neves is more replaceable. But I'd rather keep Neves just because of his potential, and I think Value. he's he's still yeah. not hit his ceiling yet. I think there's so much more to come from him. What about yourself? He's more money in him as well, as well long term. Yeah. More money in him. The monies. The monies. Uh, and do you think it's likely we'll keep them both this season? I personally think we will keep them both. I think Neves will stay definitely. Uh, the only the only one the only player I can see leaving. Excuse me, keep me up. Um, the only player I can see leaving it, it, it would be Jimenez. I don't, I can't see anyone else wanting wanting to go, but unless someone meets a valuation of him, then I'm afraid he's staying put. I don't think he's going to be one of them players who kicks up a fuss, but he does need to shut his face in the media because it's so annoying. <laughs> it's, I, don't, uh, I think it, I think he'll stay. Yeah. Um, but if the rumours are true that. Juve wanting for 80 million I would snap your arm off I remind you of that mate when we when we're in a relegation yeah, battle when you're <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant Very much um, right we also asked on Twitter uh, just for, for a little bit of fun really we wanted your player of the season disappointment of the season I didn't sort of clarify what that could be so everyone's put their own twist on that so player of the season disappointment of the season goal of the season a moment of the season. Matt, I'll give you a bit to think about those. I'll um, shout a couple of people out. I say a couple. Loads of people have got involved. So thank you so much. Uh, Add Sid away again. He says Raul is his player of the season. Disappointment of the season is back-to-back losses against Arsenal and Sheffield United. Goal of the season was Raul against Spurs. And moment of the season was the last 10 minutes against City away. Uh, Ginge, also known as WWFC Will. Player of the season, Raul. Disappointment of the season, Jota. Goal of the season, Neves against Espanyol. A moment of the season was Doc against City. Uh, Sam Banks has gone for Raul as player of the season. Jota is disappointment of the season. Neves against Espanyol. A moment of the season as Adama versus City away. Uh, Statman Joey has gone for Raul as player of the season. Jota is disappointment as well. Ruben against Espanyol as goal of the season. Uh, Man City, well, beating Man City twice with his moments of the season. Um, 
I've got to say that about 95% of the people are saying Jimenez is player of the season, which is uh, great as well. So uh, Cameron's also said it. Jimenez, uh, player of the season. Catrone as his disappoint, uh, disappointment of the season. Neves against Espanyol. And City away as his moment of the season. I'll try and read some out that are a bit different. Uh, Shiv has gone for Neves with his goal of the season against United. Moment yeah. of the season, Bolly against Besiktas, which was a, I think was a great moment. I think that game against Besiktas, by the way, Matt, was just one of those games, like, a bit like what we talked about earlier. We were so poor and so defensive, but it was just typical Nuno. You know, we managed to get that goal in the 90th minute and, and everyone yeah. wasn't asked that, about the That's what's changed, hasn't it? We, are, we haven't been getting them goals in the 90th minute. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a great finish, by the way, by Bolly. Great touch and finish. Um, Andy Gardner, he's gone for Neves as his player of the year. Uh, he just says simply gets better and better. Uh, his disappointment of the season was when Spurs scored in the last minute at Molyneux. Um, and his moment of the season was Man City away when Troy Ore scored his second goal. Uh, Justin has gone for Burnley as his uh, most disappointing moment uh, when obviously Chris Wood scored that penalty. Uh, his goal of the season, he's gone for Doc's last minute winner. Well, I say last minute, his late goal against Man City at home. And his memorable moment is Bolly's late winner uh, in Istanbul. Um... Jack has gone for uh, Jimenez as well, player of the year. Missing out on Europe is his disappointment, which I think is fair enough. Neves versus Espanyol is his goal of the year and, and City away. Captain Cody, Alex Glover, has gone for player of the season. It's Connor Cody. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Can't lower the stats. But... Uh, his disappointment of the season was Vallejo as well. Uh, mm. Liam Willis has gone for Rui as his player of the season. I like that a lot. Um, his disappointment he's gone for trying to get a selfie with Jota after his hat-trick versus Besiktas but he had his phone camera the wrong way and he's, he's, he's attached a picture of someone taking a picture of him taking a picture of him and Jota <laughs> but it's the camera face and a car and not him brilliant what was yours then, um, what, what? I think I, I've got to go with Jimenez as player of the season just because like you said like it's so hard. It will be so hard to replace that. And the amount of goals that he's got in every competition has been, you know, unbelievable. Um, and some of the goals have been great. Some have been tappings. But he's just he's just at the heartbeat of everything, really, isn't he? Mm. Whenever there's a good goal for Wolves, you know, him and his tends to be a part of it in, in some some degree. Um, disappointment of the season. It's quite hard. And like I said earlier, a lot of people sort of have chosen the way to, to pick that, whether they want to pinpoint it as a player, or as a result, as a, a scenario. Um, I think for me, it's probably missing out on Europe. Uh, echoed what a couple of people said in the comments. I think, you know, I think we all know we could have got it through the league quite comfortably and we didn't quite take our opportunities since lockdown, which was quite annoying, especially as we won the first three games of lockdown. We could have even got Champions League football. Goal of the season's a hard one. Uh... In terms of quality, I'd probably say Neves versus Espanyol. But in terms of limbs, um, you could say Doc at City, Traore at City or, or Jimenez at Spurs. Jimenez at Spurs was probably up there as well with just how well Jota did. In those there. limbs in corporate. <laughs> yeah, corporate, make corporate limbs. But they could be mo all of those could be moments of the season as well. Yeah, you know, all of those were unbelievable and and but moments of the season, us, you know, us having the opportunity to go. Obviously, I went to Belfast, but us, us having the opportunity to go to Espanyol and to Braga as well. Just, just moments that you'll never forget. You'll yeah. if Wolves sink down to League Two or or become Champions League winners ten years in a row. There, that season is one that you'll always remember. Because because of those moments, really. Yeah. It's getting a bit emotional now, it really. Is, so, it is. Uh, <laughs> um, what, what about you, Matt? What, what are you saying? I think player of the season, you've, you know, you've got players like Jimenez who've had a really good season. Adama, who had a three quarters of the season, was, was superb. But I don't think you can really look past Dazzling Dave. <laughs> 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 no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's Raul Jimenez for me. Um, if Adama would have carried on his form, throughout the season it would have been him um, but Jimenez you, you can't look past 27 goals in a season he's been he's been superb and how many goal contributions he's had he's uh, he, again took it up to another level I'd, I'd wrote him off at the start of the first season not wrote him off but I was like this, he ain't the answer I remember mm. just a few games in thinking oh, just not convinced and he's proven me wrong and he's, he's really kicked on I think goal of the season is S, uh, Neves against Espanyol it has to be I mean the technique to 
chest that down and volley it home. Superb. I think disappointment of the season was the way we ended the season and, and going out the way we did and kind of just say bottling it. But yeah, um, and I think moment of the season would have been um, Espanyol away, going to Barcelona with, with yourself. I, I love Barcelona as a city anyway. It's one of my favourites. And going away to watch Wolves and being around what, five or 6,000 like-minded Wolves fans and you know having a, having a real good booze up and stuff. It was just brilliant. And I'll, I'll probably remember it for the rest of my life despite the result. It was just great. Loved it. I think the, the the game itself was just I like... I don't really remember the game. I can't remember it. Yeah. I, just, I can just remember everyone going... Duh, 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 I don't duh, remember the score. Like, you got 4-4 four, four or something. I can't remember. 4-3, I think we lost it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I can't, can't remember. remember. Uh, someone that put as goal of the year, Jota versus Punic. I to- totally forgot about that goal, to be fair. Nah. Poor goal kick. Oh, very kick. Yeah. It was a bit lame, wasn't it? It's yeah. like so, it had so much time on that as well. Well, yeah, guys. So I didn't genuinely didn't expect so many people to send uh, their stuff in. Someone put VAR as disappointment of the season. That's quite funny. You know. Um, but yeah, there's there's loads on there. But a lot of people saying the same. Also, Raul is their player of the season. There are a couple of Cody's to be fair. There's two or three Cody's in there. Uh, a couple of Troy Allrays, a couple of Neves, a couple of uh, uh, Patricios as well. Uh, Catrone being disappointment of the season. Morgan Gibbs White as well, getting a couple of shouts in there. Um, But yeah, Matt, uh, uh, people did ask us, a couple of people did ask us about transfers. We might as well talk about that now. Mm -hmm. Uh, You said you were going to talk about it as well. We'll look at rumours very, very, very quickly and then talk about finally where we'd strengthen. Uh, Players that look pretty obvious that they're going to be signing, possibly. Paulinho, the striker. Paulinho, the central midfielder, possibly. Um, been also a couple of rumours regarding defenders and stuff and obviously Johnny Otto's unfortunately taking quite a long term injury after that um, Olympiacos game um, let's start off with that Matt obviously Johnny's going to be out possibly missed you know first half of the season at least Vinagre did okay I suppose but is he the answer for Wolves for, for the first part of the season no I don't think he is and I really like the look of is it Aitnuri from uh, yeah yeah from Angers uh, Angers, Angers yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I like to look at him, but he looked very similar to Vinagre. But he might be a yeah. little bit more polished than Vinagre, even at 19. I think if we can get him, it'd be a good bit of business. But I think we do need to bring in another another fullback, really, another wing back. I mean, the, the the dream for me, and it's probably something that's probably not achievable now out of the Europa League, but look at Regulon at Sevilla. Real Madrid want to get rid of him for 25 million. I think for 25 million, you couldn't probably get a much better player than than Regulon he's been super for Sevilla um, and I think he'd suit our system brilliantly but yeah I think we do we do need to bring in a full back and although Paulinho scored a lot of goals for Braga he's had a really good season I just I just feel a little bit underwhelmed by it I think the fee at 23 million might be a little bit overinflated and you might say well it's not your money which is fair enough I get that but I, yeah, I think he I don't know, it all it just seems a little bit too similar to what we've got. I think if we were getting a backup striker, I'd want something a little bit different to Raul in terms of attributes, someone who maybe gets in beyond his lightning quick or, you know, someone who can who can bring the ball out of the sky and bring it down or someone who can win win a big flick on. So I don't know, just they just they just seem a little bit too similar and Palina I, I like the look of him when he played Wolves. I think he controlled the game well, but again I don't think he's going to hurt teams. He's a very steady player. Recycles the ball well, but I think we need to we need someone with a bit more. And I keep saying this word dynamism. We need someone who can kind of play through the thirds and break down teams and drive. And we don't have that at all. And I look at Everton today, linked with like Alan, who probably isn't that player, but would be a good addition. And then Abdelou Decoré, who are just that kind of player would be perfect for what I'm on about. But We'll see. I can see the Paulinho deal happening and Paulinho, but I don't know. I just hope, I don't know. I just feel a little bit underwhelmed. I don't know if it's because we're coming off the back of a disappointing end of the season or not. I'm not too sure. But that doesn't mean I won't back them if they sign for Wolves. And if they do sign for Wolves, I want them to be well beaters. So, not writing them off. Yeah, and it's just, I do agree. I think, you know, the... I think fans as well want high-profile signings as well. We've sort of discussed it slightly in, 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 in terms of players that we want in terms of mould. I think it's clear we'll probably sign a striker, whether that be Paulinho or not, or whether 
we sign another striker um, as well as Paulinho, central midfielder, which we have been linked with, a centre back, and a left wing back as well. Um, I think obviously they, the, there were rumours about a young goalkeeper, but I'd assume Sarkic fits that bill now. And uh, obviously with John Rudy staying for another year, so that could possibly be on hold really for another 12 months at least. But I think it'll be ex very intriguing the first proper summer now without Kevin Felwell. Obviously he left sort of the end of January or early February. Um, and I'd see now if Jeff she will, like you say, flex flex their financial, uh, Fosun's financial power and... And, and see where it takes us, really. Um, I do it, you know. We've got the money; it's obvious. Um, I think we're lucky enough to be in a, a decent financial position with the sales of Cavalero, Costa, the bonuses that they've brought in as well since their promotion. Um, it, it could be interesting. I, I'm hoping that next time we chat, Wolves have brought in two or three quality players that Matt, 95 percent of the fan base are extremely happy with because. Yeah. Do you, what, what, what do you think? Do you think Wolves need depth, or do you think you know what, what players there at the moment? Maybe is it Sace that you could replace? You know, yeah, with, definitely. You know, I think left he, wing back position. He's know. he's done a job really, and you know he's, he has improved. But if you're looking at that, okay, Rui's quality, Cody could potentially be improved. But I think it's not, it's not like an urgent one. I think maybe in two years it may be as we move forward when we want to look at Bolly sound if he doesn't play like he's pissed like he was in lockdown um, <laughs> Johnny superb Doc again would do a job for another season but I think if we do get the opportunity to bring in a more attacking fullback on either side they have to I think or even a youngster like Max Aaron's no, surely to like compete with him a little bit more imagine like I said, you, you want to go for it in the cups, and you've got Doc or Max Aaron's to pick from as your two mm. right, right backs. You know they're two very. And good Doc can play on the left as well. You know he can cover yeah, exactly. that. Not great, but he can play on the left. I think Matinho or then Donker are very much somewhere that we need to kind of not replace, but have another option. Again, dynamic midfielder, someone who can break down the thirds, etc., etc., half spaces. And then it's a striker for me. I think we're stacked in wide positions, but we need another striker. So, do you think there's better wingers out there? Like, if Wolves had the opportunity to cash in oh, on, absolutely, yeah. You know, there's so many players. Like, I know Wolves have been. We spoke about it. Some Maximin, or there's players like Guedes, who you know, Valencia are in turmoil at the moment. It's like, yeah, ah, cheers, boy. Gonzalo Guedes. <laughs> for, for this is it. Um, you know, there's there's players like that, and you think, you know what? Yeah, walls are stacked, but there's so many better wingers out there, isn't there? I think. Uh, yeah, and I, I had this conversation with someone the other day, and it was like, if a player becomes available who improves your team, and financially it makes sense, then you you'd be daft not to. It's like if I was, I was saying to you, like if Harry Kane become available and he wanted to move to Wolves don't sign him because we've got him in it. No, absolutely you go out and sign him as long as it makes financial sense. I just think mm -hmm. to grow, you can't have that kind of sentiment like uh, Jota, uh, I love Jota when he's firing, I love Adama but if you said if you said to me like, okay well we're, we're going to we're going to maybe sell Adama and Jota we're going to bring in, I don't know someone like Jado, Jaden Sancho or, or someone, you know, someone who was just, just that next level, you'd be you'd be daft not to, and that's how you grow. But I don't know. I I, ju I just hope we have a really really big window. Uh, I think we need three or four players at the 30, 35 million pound mark to really take it to the next level. Whether they come in or not, different topic altogether. Yeah, it will be very very interesting to see um, how we get on as well. Um, I do need to give a shout out, by the way. There was a uh, Moldy. He messaged me personally with his player of the seasons and stuff. Before every podcast, he messages me, and I always forget to shout him out. <laughs> so Moldy, his player of the se uh, player of the season was Bolly. He says his return to the team saw a big run of clean sheets and upturn in form. Disappointment of the season was the last minute penalty at Burnley. Because he thinks if we won that game, that would more or less guarantee us European football, which to be fair, it would have. Goal of the season, he's put uh, Bolly away at Besiktas. And moment of the season was Raul's goal away at Torino, because he was there, he was lucky enough to uh, to witness that. So there you go, Moldy. I thought, I think, you know what, I better yeah, not forget if, you. If, if, we are, if we are doing shout-outs, there's a, there's, 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 a, there's a girl at work we've called Katie, whose family live in Gornal. And she... Big um, she didn't re didn't realise that I was part of Talking Wolves and her old man listens to the podcast religiously in his van. So 
if you are listening to this, Mr. Collins from Gornal, I'm a <laughs> thanks for Big listening. Mr. Collins. And yeah, and, and keep supporting. I really, really appreciate you, you tuning in and listening to mine and Dave's dulcet tones. <laughs> well, that goes for everyone. Everyone, anyone yeah. that's ever listened to the podcast, you know, clicked out on our website, clicked like on a status or post, and watched our videos. It it means a lot. And obviously, the 1920 season in terms of content now for us is over. Uh, we'll be working behind the scenes on you know pushing towards our new content, our new graphics, and everything towards the 2021 season. In the meantime, we'll be posting updates on all of our platforms about transfers, about the Wolves news on our website as well. So keep your eye out for that. And um, yeah, a bit, a, a bit of a shout out as well. There's opportunities to sponsor Talking Walls as well. If you own a local business yeah, or you know push. you want to, yeah, another sales push, sorry. <laughs> uh, if you want to get your name out there, be sure to drop yeah. us a message or email us at info at talkingwalls.co.uk. Uh, but Matt, it's been a pleasure. If people wish to find you on social medias, where can they do so? They can find me on... Instagram and Twitter, M Cooper writes, writes as in written. Um, Matthew Cooper on LinkedIn. Um, should you wish to discuss LinkedIn. any business ventures for the Talking Walls, any sponsorship or stuff like that, always happy to have those conversations with, with people. And um, finally, David, where can I find you and more importantly, Talking Walls? Well, it is at Dave as a party on Twitter and Talking Walls is at Talking Walls everywhere Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter everywhere so uh, yeah talkingwolves.co.uk for all your transfer rumour blogs news views and everything else in between I love that I love that Uh, guys thank you so much for your support (laughs) this season Uh, this has been the Talking Wolves end of season podcast and uh, enjoy the rest of your summer and until the start of next season we'll see you all very very soon